I've been thinking about OCD this morning since a friend on Twitter posted or retweeted an article about uh, pure O or primarily obsessional obsessive compulsive disorder, a form of OCD in which which is not characterized by checking and counting and um, some of the more overt forms of compulsion, but primarily by obsessions in the brain. Um, I had never heard of this term before, and reading this article, it seems clear to me that uh, that I have that. <laughs> um, you know, the way I describe my OCD to doctors has typically been to say that um, that yes, I have those symptoms, but not with the checking. You know, but not with the counting. Um, I don't, or to say, but I don't lock my door 12 times. You know, I don't do those sorts of things, but I do have um, obsessional thinking. And I, you know, I was recently hospitalized about a month ago for feeling suicidal and homicidal. And one of the things that I think happened during the re-medication process while the doctors in this hospital looked at my medicine, looked at my diagnoses, and decided to make medicine changes is I think that they ignored the OCD part of my diagnosis and focused primarily on my bipolar diagnosis. Um, something that even, you know, it's taken me a month of being out of the hospital to realize kind of what happened there um, myself. It's not something I was fully aware of at the time, and this hospital wasn't into um, patient participation in the meds changing process. They viewed me as incapacitated, not as a, an ill person who has done his own reading and has his own experience and knowledge about bipolar disorder and OCD and um, the medicines that go along with treating them. Um, but anyway one of the things that happened medicine-wise is that I was taken off of Lexapro, um, escitalopram, my antidepressant, which is an SSRI, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. And those medicines are one of the primary treatments for OCD because they affect how the amygdala in the brain works. OCD is a very, um, as far as I can tell, well, basically well-understood um, kind of disorder in the brain, and it's, um, although I, as a not being a neurologist, don't necessarily understand it, but the reading that I've done indicates to me that it's um, a disorder whose workings in the brain is fairly well understood, and it has to do with the communication loop between the amygdala and your frontal lobes, and in OCD people, this um, communication happens more times than it should. So in a normal person, there's kind of a length of dwelling on something, and that's determined by the communication between these two parts of the brain and the neurotransmitters that are used to do that communication. But in OCD people, there are more, there are literally more loops of communication that happen between those two parts of the brain. That's my understanding anyway. Um, and what tangent am I on? Um... But I feel like th at this last hospital that I was in, they were careless in removing my Lexapro from my medicine cocktail after having seen OCD listed as one of my diagnosis, um, diagnoses. It seems irresponsible to remove something that Maybe maybe it's not obvious to them. Maybe it should have been. Um, you know, was there to treat OCD as well as depression? Um, but to just remove that sort of thing because you think it might push a patient manic is maybe irresponsible. And it must be tough. I mean, I've read a good deal about the logic behind using or not using antidepressants with bipolar patients and um you know one of the ideas is that it can push the patient to be manic another is that treatment is that when people are treated bipolar people are treated with antidepressants it can increase the rate of rapid cycling um so there are definitely reasons to think not to use an antidepressant in a bipolar patient 
Um, but what about the case of a patient who is bipolar and has OCD? You know, when your first line of treatment toward the OCD is an antidepressant um, or an SSRI or a tricyclic antidepressant in some cases, um, you know, the picture becomes more complicated. Maybe a low dose of the SSRI makes more sense than no dose of an SSRI. Um, anyway, that's just something I, I was thinking about in terms of my medication and last hospitalization. Um, the article on Pure O, or Primarily Obsessional Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, got me thinking about one of the, well, the earliest that I can think of symptom of OCD that I experienced in my life, and it was very young, um, certainly before the fourth grade, did I experience this. So sometime in my childhood up to and including the third grade, I remember, um, just because I remember where we lived at the time, that's how I'm pinning, pinpointing down kind of when it was, and I can't pinpoint it any more accurately than that. But I remember as a very young child being becoming obsessed with my blinking and having this thought that I've become aware of each blink, and every time I blink... I will now be aware of that for the rest of my life. You know, as a very young child, I, I thought that I was going to get into a state where, and I feared that I was getting into a state where this mundane item of action I was going to be aware of every single time it happened from now until I died. Uh, and it was a very scary thought because I would be aware of my blinking in this state for quite a while. And I'd notice each blink as it happened, and I would I would anticipate the upcoming blinks as they happened. Um, and fortunately, every time you know, it would I would eventually forget about the fact that I was blinking, but and things would be okay again until I realized I had blink again, um, and was put back into that state. But um, reading that pure O article made me think of that kind of very early experience that I had with. Um, with a pure O type obsession where there was no compulsion. I wasn't making myself blink. I wasn't uh, counting my blinks, although I guess that might not be a, a compulsion. Um, I guess you could, it could be argued either way. But, uh, but there was this obsessional thought with blinking that happened. Um, skip way ahead to current times. I have an obsession that is a pure O type obsession, which I find, um, and especially until reading this article today, I found very disturbing, not very disturbing, but, uh, but somewhat disturbing. And that is not, not blinks, but dicks. I have this obsession with noticing other guys' dicks. Like if I'm with someone who's wearing shorts or tighter pants or spandex, you know, there's this obsession of checking out the guy's dick. Um, and, and it makes me wonder, am I gay, you know, etc. Um, and it's, it's unbreakable. I mean, this obsession is, is solid for me. It's, it's, it's always occurring and it's somewhat disturbing. It's, Annoying just because I don't want to be focused on that necessarily in, um, you know, every conversation I have at a swimming pool. Um, yeah. And, but the main thing is, and not that there's anything wrong with being gay, that's not what's under discussion here, but um, is that it makes me wonder if I'm gay. It's like, I'm wondering, is this some indication that that's the case and I just haven't allowed myself to be gay when really deep underneath I am gay and, you know, I'm, I'm like hiding it and, um, and all this stuff, you know, when some signs point to the contrary, I've never been in a homosexual relationship. I don't fantasize about men. I don't have any homosexual porn. Um, so, you know, some indications, there's some indications there that I'm straight um, but then there's this dick obsession <laughs> where I want to and I can't stop myself from. It's not that I want to, it's that I can't stop myself from. I mean, it's want and don't want at the same time. You know, I want to and also don't want to look. Um, but I have to look. And it's this, uh, you know, this puro 
primarily obsessive obsession primarily obsessional obsessive compulsive disorder type um, obsession that I have that that strikes me as kind of my modern day equivalent to the blinking one you know it's it's one of my most prevalent um, obsessions that I have and oh what else did I want to talk about I think I was going to talk about other obsessions that I have. Can I think of any? I have one that's to remember this guy's name. It's to remember the name of a guy that I worked with. And I can't remember his name, and I don't want to remember his name. But sometimes it gets into my head that I'm going to remember it, and... And I fear remembering it because I feel like he was a total douchebag and I, as such, I don't want his name in my head, you know? Um, so I don't want to, even when, when the thought presents itself of remembering his name, I try to um, quickly think about other things that are compelling and distracting so that I don't think about his name, so that his name doesn't occur in my brain because I don't want his douchebag name to occur in my brain, you know? Um, but then it becomes this obsession where... I can't stop thinking about trying to remember his name. Um, stuff like that. You know, when I read this Puro article, things like that kept popping out of the woodwork for me, um, where the kind of traditional obsessive-compulsive disorder descriptions had never really quite fit me. Um, but, but the Puro description does. I remember my friend... Julian from high school um, describing this obsession that he had in the 10th grade he described this to me this obsession he had with with trying to make this spinning dancer in his brain stop he had a spinning dancer in his brain like a music box dancer and he wanted to make it stop but couldn't um, and it strikes me that, that Julian perhaps has OCD you know, and maybe he has pure OCD, pure OCD. Um, anyway, I ha I have other obsessions that run the the sexual, um, the murderous, the you know. I imagine myself jumping out of windows, jumping out of moving cars. That's one of them. Is I am obsessed with the idea that I will become unable to stop myself from opening the door of a moving car, taking my seatbelt off, opening the door of a moving car, and jumping out of it while someone else is driving. Um, and that that will be how I die. When I'm on high floor windows, I, like there was this window at my therapist's office especially that I used to always be afraid or fantasize about jumping out of um, and killing myself. And it's, you know, and here, obsession and compulsion can be very dangerous things um, because, you know, jumping out of that window at my therapist's office was more of a pure O type thing in that it was too small of a window to really jump out of properly. Um, and you probably could have gotten yourself out and down and, and killed yourself, but it would have been quite difficult to really finagle it. Um, but in my one suicide attempt, it was a very... Um, obsessive compulsive type thing i i had these pills in my pocket this bottle of pills and i couldn't stop thinking about taking them and i did you know i thought about giving them to the secretary at the hospital where i was taking an outpatient class so that i wouldn't be able to to follow my obsession with a compulsion but um, with action and but I didn't do that, and I did actually take this bottle of pills or many pills from this bottle, and and it became a suicide attempt. You know, so that's a case where um, my pure OCD ventured into not so pure OCD, and you know I think there is reason to really fear these types of obsessions because sometimes they are followed up with action.